Hello, everyone. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy, a passionate world talk radio network, which is a subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Our mantra is to educate, enlighten, and entertain. Folks, I love hearing about a personal interest stories. And uh, with me today is Danny. She wants to go by Danny, who is a friend of my son. And not only is Danny a friend of my son, Joshua, mm-hmm. Danny introduced me to, so I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, George, okay, K.S. Arnold, whose interview you can find on um, Spotify, Spreaker, uh, wherever you hear a podcast. Mm-hmm. And I want to... Um, thank uh, Danny for that. And also, Danny was on last year. And Danny is, uh, as I said, a friend. She has a friend of uh, my son. She is a member of the mental health community and the LBGTQ plus community. She is a disabled daughter of a disabled parent. And last year, Danny talked about her experiences in various facilities. And we talked about mental health. But next month is June already, which is um, Pride Month. And I want to welcome Danny to Chatting with Betsy. Welcome again. Thank you for having me back. I enjoyed myself so much last time. So I couldn't wait to come back. Oh, well, I'm so glad to have you on. And... This is going to be an interesting conversation, folks, because, you know what, we need to educate ourselves to um, the LBGTQ plus community. And let me just say this. Even if you don't agree with someone's lifestyle, and we're not asking you to, I'm not asking you to, that doesn't give anyone the right to belittle humiliate and hurt someone because you don't agree with their lifestyle. My philosophy is live and let live. Okay. All everyone wants anybody is to live in peace and harmony in their neighborhood. That's all people want and be respected. So you don't have to like their lifestyle, their religion, their ethnic background, but be respectful and Very well let's thought. stop the bullying. Yes, stop the bullying, let's stop the hate. But, Danny, what is your experience? Well, um, I first, like, well, I first figured out I was attracted to both men and women. When I was a teenager, I was still in high school, I was about 16 or 17. And I had a crush on one of my female friends. And, you know, I, like, and I came out to my parents when I was, like, 18, 19. And my father at first said, oh, it's just a phase you're going through. Because my father, may he rest in peace, was homophobic for a very long time. So he just didn't. <clears throat> didn't didn't think it was something real, you know. He didn't think right. it was real. And that and my mom was like, Okay, cool. You know, my mom my mom's always been very accepting of everyone. But the difference between my mom and dad is that my mom was 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 raised in a house with love and respect for everyone. My my father was raised by at least one racist parent. So it's different when you have a person, a parent who hates a certain demographic or mm-hmm. several different demographics. So, yeah. And then um, about maybe five, six years ago, I realized, hey, I'm not attracted to someone by their gender. I'm attracted to people by their, more so by their personality. And I realized, 
I'm not really bisexual, I'm pansexual. So I was like, always wonder what that meant. <laughs> I always wonder what pansexual meant. Pansexual <laughs> means that you're not attracted to someone based on their gender. You're attracted to someone based on other factors like their personality and stuff. So uh, that's what pansexual means. Because I got confused between that and gender fluid. Yeah. Gender fluid, which I'm also gender fluid, is gender fluid is when you have both a male and a female personality and you flow between the two of them. Like there's times where I can be very feminine, but there's also times where I can be very masculine. I didn't figure that out until about a year or two ago, my gender identity. So, but there's many and, different. Yeah, that there's many. Yeah, yes. the LGBTQ plus community is a spectrum. Yes, yes, um, and um, a quite a growing. It seems I don't even believe how fast the, the time goes. Remember last year in um, Target, they was a big ruckus because they had uh, oh, yeah. bathing suits. Um, yeah, all and then pride. Merchandise. Yeah, yeah, which I think yeah, is just, fantastic. But you know, you're going to get your haters out there and your people who are homophobic or whatever. Yeah, I mean, when Josh and I went into Target, and you know, in Edison, I didn't even notice it. But to be honest with you, I'm, I passed right by, and Josh goes, "Oh, this is what the news is talking about." So I said, "Let me go over and look." <clears throat> I don't know. I don't see the big deal about it. If you don't like it, pass no. by it. Exactly. Um, but some people get by the little things. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, and it was only a small section. So, I mean, I don't know what the big deal is. Um, probably people didn't talk about it. They wouldn't even be noticed. You know, exactly. um, if you didn't bring it up, it wouldn't be talked about. Yeah. And yeah, so, oh, go ahead. someone on Fox News probably got mad and, you know, um, someone somewhere got mad and decided to make a big stink out of it. You know, you could choose to purchase or not purchase. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, to look at the the uh, merchandise, and I was nosy. So <laughs> once I saw it, yeah. I said, uh, "Let me go take a look." And I'm like, "Well, what's the big stink about?" Like, um, I have I'm friends with a few gay couples, and I know the one did buy stuff from Target, Pride, <clears throat> uh, Pride Wear at Target because they were happy they were finally selling it. Because the community is being more put in the spotlight, especially the transgender community, which really irritates me that they get so much hate. And they even get hate within the community. And I don't think that's right. If you're a member of a specific community, you should support everyone in that community, not just a select group of people. Exactly. Yes. Um, I, I agree. And I don't know, like, why people seem, now I'm in my 60s, okay? I'm 66. Mm -hmm. So when I was growing up, you did not talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. If you were in the um, gay community, you did not dare say anything for fear of losing your job and being attacked. Um, I didn't find out until many years ago that um, my mom had a cousin who was gay, and at that time, in the 60s, you did not mm. talk about it. His parents threw him out. And oh, I wow. think sometimes that males 
homosexual males are more frowned upon maybe than uh, lesbians are. And now, oh, yeah. you know, it's, oh, yeah. uh, you know, bi or transgender. And, you know, I, I shop in stores. I see men who either are transgender or they're just, you know, dressing in women's clothes. You know what? I don't care. Hey, if you, if you're a good salesperson mm-hmm. and you help me, I don't care what you are. I really don't care what people are. Um, I take each person as they are. And I think that, you know, if people would just take people as they are Mm -hmm. and stop, you know, judging. You know, there's pedophiles in every community. In every community there are pedophiles. So you can't just say, oh, this community has it. Or that community has it because you know what? <laughs> You'd be surprised who is, okay? <laughs> There's rotten eggs in every community. Every yeah. community has good people and it's bad people. Exactly. And the LGBTQ plus community is no different because I've met some wonderful people in the community and I've met some not so wonderful people in the community. So, and what you were saying earlier reminded me of a story. Um, I had a friend when I was living in Avenel who was gay, and we went to this one little consignment shop in in Avenel and missed that place that closed down years ago. But my friend tried on dresses, and the lady who owned the store could not have been cooler about it. Like, she was like, do you need to find you anything? Oh, that looks good. No, I don't like that on you. Like, she was really cool about it. And my friend was like, I'm so glad they were so cool about it because if I went into any other store, they would give me, you know, bull about it. <clears throat> yes, I I worked in, um, well, I won't say the name of the store, but it sells um, body care products. And um, there were all kinds of couples coming in, people, uh, boys, young boys, uh, young men looking for nail polish. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, who cares? I treated everyone if equal. A guy, if a guy wants to paint his nails, it shouldn't be a problem, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. <clears throat> I have a friend who will sometimes paint his ma- nails or get manicure, and he gets frowned upon for it. And it's like self-care is important for guys, too, not just women. And that is part of self-care. If he wants to do that as a self-care routine, so be it. Who Who is anyone to judge? That That's true. And this is – I have a funny story. I worked in the preschool – one of the girls said to me, one of the boys were wearing nail polish, and one of the girls said to me, Miss Betsy, so-and-so is wearing nail polish. Boys don't wear nail polish. And I went, well, yeah, some do. Yeah. Some boys do wear nail polish. And yeah. it's funny because there were boys in the preschool who probably, when they reach their teenage years, are going to come out because they very strongly, I could see, um, tendencies. I mean, one boy loved to dress in uh, girl clothes and heels, and he would say, I'm a queen. <laughs> I mean, and he really right. played with girls' dolls. Uh, another boy uh, would bring in Barbie, and he was very uh, feminine. Yeah. So I think, yeah, sometimes you could just see it, and, you know, when they're young, and not and just think, yeah. you know, this guy's going to come out as being whatever he's going to come out, gay or bi or what, whatever. He might, he might not, but <clears throat> hey, kudos to them. I mean, some, even some straight guys will play with, like, Barbie dolls. Like, especially if they're playing with their little sister. You're right. Like, yeah. My brother used to play play with me with my Barbies, you know? And we would have fun playing with the Barbies. Um. We didn't discourage who should play with what in the in preschool, exactly. you know, and uh, so, whatever they want to play with. Exactly. I would play with my brother's action figures. I I would play with Batman and Spider-Man and everything. 
you know, it, toys really shouldn't have a gender because pe- people get interested in, like, especially kids, they get interested in what attracts them. And, you know, if they're attracted to, like, one toy that's not meant for their gender, why stop them? Why stop them? Because you're not letting them be who they are if you do that, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, I, that's another funny story. Josh wanted a brother or sister, so I brought him a buddy doll back then. And I don't know if... Um, <laughs> yeah, um, oh, they don't have them out anymore. Uh, oh, but no, I thought it was I cute. Mean- but I remember the commercials because um, yeah. the song was my buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy <laughs> and me. And we had this one dog who we used to sing, my puppy, my puppy, my puppy. So, yeah. And Matt had a conniption. He was furious. What are you doing buying him a doll? Do you want him? Oh, I won't even say it on, on air. Um, mm-hmm. And he would... Um, he would even make fun of me of like taking Josh to the mall and he'd say, do you want him to be like, you know, uh, this famous designer, which I won't mention the name. And I said, Hey, if Josh was to be a designer and live on fire Island to be a multimillionaire, that's fine with me. <laughs> he could support yeah. me in my old age. Yeah. <laughs> my dad wanted to be a fashion designer, but unfortunately his parents were not encouraging of that. Yeah. Um, so, and I have to say this to parents. And I could say it because I am a parent. I would never throw my son or if I had a daughter out because of who they loved. Never. Because when you do that, you're putting your child at such danger living out on the streets exactly. and then they could become, you know, um, sold. I mean, and get into trouble. Don't cut off that communication. Mm-hmm. If you don't agree with who they love and you don't like that lifestyle, that's fine. You don't have to. But to throw your child out on the street, uh, I could say they were a criminal, you know, when you, they're, you know, with drugs and stuff. And, uh, you know, there's tough love, and I can understand that. But to throw your child out on the street because of who they love is just, I, I can't even accept that. Exactly. I, <laughs> but love who you love. You know? Yeah. I just can't wrap my head uh, around that. I um, mean, I never told Josh who to love as far as, you know, ethnic color mm-hmm. um i never i never told him you yeah know, you can only love this I mean, or you can only love this person talking about talking about you know parents kicking out their kids or disowning their kids for um them being gay that reminds me of a television show i watched for many years it was on in the 80s and then they did a spin-off when I was a teenager, but it's called The Grassy High. And one of the characters had a gay brother. And the parents, when they found out the brother was gay, disowned the brother and said, you're not welcome here anymore. And that happens more often than people realize. And it's not right. It's not right to kick your kid out or disown your kid just because of who they love. That's true. I would rather have my son or daughter living with me at home and I could see who they are dating. And just like it, mm-hmm. it was, um, you know, heterosexual. Oh, no, I don't like this person because of ABC. I, you know, my mom, mm-hmm. my mom would say, no, this one isn't right for you. But when I met Matt, she goes, she, after the first date, my mom said, you're going to marry him. I said, how do you know? Oh, she goes, I just know. So oh, wow. I would, that's the advice that I would, I would give, you know, um, uh, my child that they were dating, whether they dated male or, or, or female. Um, I just think that, you know, 
I used to say to um, when I would do uh, videos as far as like caregiving that caregivers need a stone wall um, and to to stand up and to be um, out and proud. And I think that you know we should just. I don't know. I don't understand hate people. I don't. I don't get it. I really don't. I mean, maybe I'm a product of growing up in the hippie era. I don't know. <laughs> but I just think it's wrong to disrespect people and to be hateful. Um, how did you find in coming out with your friends who knew you? Did you get um, I a lot of support. both positive and I negative? I a lot of support. And a, oh, lot good. Of, a lot of my friends are... <laughs> Is the LGBTQ plus community. Like I said, I'm friends with a few gay couples, you know, and a lot of my a lot of my friends weren't surprised, you know, a lot of them weren't surprised. Um, but it's funny because I was just thinking when when I came out to my dad as pansexual, he was like, "Oh, cool," which showed how he progressed in his thinking from being. Um, homophobic to accepting of his daughter loving whoever it is no matter if they're male or female or non-binary or whatever you know so yeah he grew and one of the reasons he grew is because he used to go to this one group and some of the members of the group were were gay and he made friends with them and then he realized hey, why am I hating these people for, you know? Yeah, I think men have a harder time, and especially if you grew up in the Pacific yeah. time frame. Um, yeah. It was very... <laughs> part of the community, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 It was uh, very much so. And... Um, you know, let's talk about the mental health of the LBGTQ plus community. There's a lot of suicide among young people. There's a Especially lot. Especially transgender youth. Because they, yes, I'm a big advocate for transgender people because I know how much hate they get. And it's not right. You know, some people think it's a mental illness to be transgender. But it's not, in my opinion. It's just you don't feel like you're the sex you were assigned at birth. I mean, I I, I don't completely understand it myself, but I'm not going to hate you just because you realize you, you really aren't the sex you are, you know? And it's sad that people who are transgender get so much hate and like, especially young people, especially the young people, the young people have it so hard. Like I just, it's a struggle because when AOL was a thing and I'm dating myself here, when AOL was (laughs) a thing, I met, I met a teenage girl who was transgender and no one wanted to talk to her, but I was the one who I am her and talk to her. So it's like, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I look at it this way for a guy to take female hormones and to get rid of their, uh, modify uh, their male parts. They got to really be unhappy being a man. And the same exactly. thing as, as as far as a female. Now, if I had a child who said they were transgender and wanted to change, I would probably would say, okay, do you want to wear, you know, girl clothes? That's your thing. But don't do any surgery or take hormones until you're 18 and you make sure because you can't undo to, for you to make mm-hmm. sure. I would just, like, there are some cosmetic surgeries they won't even do until you're 16 or 18. So that's, what, yeah, exactly. that's my suggestion. You know, that's my suggestion. 
don't do it to young, you know, I wouldn't do it to a young child. I would wait until, you know, yes, if you, exactly. this is what you really want. Wait till you're 18, you're a legal adult, and you can, mm-hmm. if you still feel that way, then that's, mm-hmm. that's your thing, then that's well, what you do. Well, some, <laughs> some younger people even transition back sometimes because they realize for whatever reason, it's like, you know what, I really don't feel like the the sex I chose. So people do transition back for many different reasons. But I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert. I'm just speaking from what I've known and seen on, like, transgender people's YouTube pages. So... Yes, I've heard that um, also. And I'm not an expert. And folks, I just want to say consult your pediatrician, um, your primary care doctor, you know, for any um, mental health issues or if you decide to um, have a surgical procedure, take uh, hormones. Um, Mm -hmm. But there is, I mean, and as far as like met, like medical care, health care. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've interviewed um, quite a few people from the LBGTQ plus community on my show mm-hmm. that there is disparities in the, in the health care community. Have you noticed that? Have you heard yeah. anything about that? I think I've heard about it, especially when it comes to like certain things. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, but, um, yeah, no, there's inequities in the healthcare system depending on what you, what you need for your health. And I feel like sometimes transitioning is the best thing they can a transgender person can do for their mental health because sure again same show i was talking about earlier the reboot of it um degrassi the next generation they had a transgender character first transgender character on canadian television it is a show out of canada and they had a transgender character and when the transgender character was forced to be the sex they were assigned at birth, they got very depressed and started cutting themselves. And then they realized, and then the parents and family realized, no, this is who my child needs to be. They need to be Adam, not Gracie. So, you know, but not all families come to that point. Some families can't accept it. And That's true. I kind of understand yeah. because it, it, it might be something hard to understand. And I still have trouble understanding it, but I'm accepting. That's the thing. Right. And you know what? If you love someone, with, you know, your child, it's a relative, it's a friend, mm-hmm. then why can't you be supportive? Even if you don't agree with mm-hmm. it. You can at least show mm-hmm. support and say, you know what? I'm here for you. Exactly. Whatever you know, you, you decide to do uh, mm-hmm. as a friend because mm-hmm. we don't always accept or like things that people do, but that doesn't mean that you turn your back on them and abandon exactly. them. A lot of people don't understand things that are not the norm. They can't comprehend things that are not the norm sometimes. And I hate to say it, but being transgender is not the norm. It should be more accepted. Every part of the LGBTQ plus community should be more accepted. Like, I mean, I think about 10 years ago when they were trying to, to, um, to legalize gay marriage and how, you know, people banded together because you know, as I've gotten older, you know, gays, lesbians, you know, 
that has been more widely accepted as I've grown older. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I was also thinking earlier about um, there's this one show on Amazon Prime based on the movie. Well, it's not really based on the movie A League of Their Own, but it's more historically, a more historically accurate A League of Their Own. And it it really gets into, like, the LGBTQ plus issues during the 40s. Really good show if you want to watch, if you have <clears throat> Amazon Prime. But it really gets into, like, the issues the lesbians face and gay people face in the 1940s. Oh, yeah. So, oh, definitely. Yeah, and if you were in Hollywood, that was a secret. Oh, yeah. This was, yeah. this was um, A League of Their Own, if you've seen the movie, it's about the Women's National Baseball League. Yeah, yeah, I saw that and, movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the show is also about um, the Women's National Baseball League, but it also explores, you know, gay rights at the time or the gay community at the time really good show highly recommend there's if you have um, i interviewed someone uh, last year uh, who grew up in the 70s she was about the same age as a couple of years older than, than i am and she grew up in mm-hmm. foster homes and how she was treated when they found out in, in this one situation that she kissed a girl and they beat her up. And it, that's um, horrible. Yeah, it, it's really um, a shame how people are, you know, treated, especially, you know, back then. And then, you know, as far as like musicians, you know, we it kind of knew who was, but it wasn't announced, you know, they they didn't talk about it, but right. But it was more so against held against the women who were gay than men. Uh, Because when I was growing up, it was more female, females who were gay were accepted than men who were, who were accepted if they were gay. It was the reverse with me growing up because, you know, people think, Oh, two girls is hot, you know? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I thought back, I mean, and when I interviewed this person, I I thought back to when I was, I don't know how old are they, 11 or 12, and I was at sleepaway camp, and this girl kissed mm-hmm. me. Now, I didn't mm-hmm. think anything of it. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't think, oh, I'm gay or she's gay because we didn't talk about it mm-hmm. then. And mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought she was being friendly. That's how naive I was. <laughs> um, like, when I grew up, it was just starting, there was just <clears throat> starting to be like more gay rights and everything. It was starting to be more brought into public attention when I was growing up because I grew up in the 90s and early on. So, you know, there was, there was more, it was more spoken about, it was more right. Yeah. Put in the public eye and people were still very, you know, homophobic and hating of the community. And you know, I think people nowadays have become more accepting of, like, gay men and lesbians, but they haven't become accepting of transgender people. And if you're going to accept one part of the community, why not accept the whole community? Yeah, I wonder why that is. Like, even in the gay community, the LBGTQ oh, plus community, why I've they seen discriminate people in the community who are not trans hate on trans on the transgender members because 
of whatever reason. And it's not right. It's not right. Like, I knew this one guy who was gay, and he couldn't stand transgender people for some reason. I don't know why. Like, why are you hating on someone in your own community? Doesn't make sense. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't. Um, and, and there's why there's a resentment. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't, yeah, that, I don't know. When I worked um, in a state institution, um, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that there was resentment between lighter black people and darker black people. And someone explained it to me. They said, Betsy, it comes from the, the slave days that the darker skinned were outside working and the lighter skinned got treated better. They were yeah. in the house working. I had no idea. I didn't have a clue. Yeah, someone explained that to me too. Or I think I read <clears throat> something in a book because I used to be a really big reader, especially of historical fiction. So I had, um, and, and you know what, I didn't know that. Just like um, people from different uh, areas, um, mm-hmm. there was a lot of cultural differences where I worked among mm-hmm. different people. And um, I, just, <laughs> I just found it interesting. But I was like, wow. I mean, it was like, edu- it was culturally educational. Uh, for me because yeah I did not know it was the same thing back in like the I think it was like the 20s to like the 50s with like Irish people and Italians hating each other Uh, yeah I remember that yeah I heard about that but ironically I am both (laughs) Irish and Italian (laughs) so That is, um, yeah, I, I heard that. It, my best friend in high school was, um, her dad was from Ireland and her mother was um, Italian. So yeah. uh, I thought that was uh, funny. It, it's when <laughs> Matt's mom, um, Matt's mom's family was a German. I didn't dare mm-hmm. tell my father. I didn't dare tell him there was any German because he wouldn't have liked Matt. So I just said he was Irish. <laughs> well, I am Which also was. part German. I'm a mutt. I'm more of a mutt than a dog. Uh, so I, you know, I didn't, I wouldn't, uh, I don't think I told Matt, I mean, my dad, that Matt had, that Matt's mom was German until after we were married for a while. Because um, people do, you know, they do judge. And, and, you know, at that time, I mean, I didn't fault my father. I understand where he was coming from. But uh, I just, uh, yeah, I kept that a secret. Uh, Dan, as we wrap up here, what would you like people to know about um, the LBQ plus community what should straight people people, or anyone i would like people to know just because someone is gay lesbian transgender whatever does not mean you need to hate on them because they have it hard enough as it is why put more more pressure or more on their plate and i also want people to know that Transgen- being transgender is not a mental illness, in my opinion. You know, transgender people get more hate than they deserve. It's not fair to them. People are people, and just be accepting of people in general, because it's not fair to hate someone based on who they love or how they feel inside. True. Very good. There's, I watch um, a podcast, and it's two gay men, and Mm -hmm. they get discriminated against in social media and in the makeup industry because they are men who wear makeup. And then during Gay Pride Month, 
you know, Egg Pride Month, all these makeup companies say, oh, they're inclusive. They're inclusive when they're not. Exactly. And, and like, do you guys <laughs> excuse me. You see a bunch of drag queens wearing great makeup. Like, you know, if you've ever gone to, like, a Pride Festival, like Asbury Pride, for example, you'll see a bunch of people wear a bunch of men wearing makeup or whatever. <laughs> so make, makeup doesn't need to be gender specific either because you figure a lot of actors, male actors, wear makeup because they have to for their job. Yeah. So why is it okay for an actor to wear makeup but not your everyday average Joe to wear makeup? Why? That's that's true. And, you know, if you can make your skin look better, why not wear exactly. a tinted moisturizer or whatever you want to uh, wear? Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, well, I want to thank you, Danny. Oh, go ahead. And I'll be and I'll be frank. Some men do makeup. <laughs> I can't do makeup yeah. that well. But it seems some men on, on, like, Facebook and whatever do makeup way better than I ever could. Yes, and great at uh, makeup, hair, and, and selling. My dad used to sell uh, makeup, well, skincare, hair products, and he would tell me, like Harold Square, and I'm talking in the 70s, 60s, 70s, mm-hmm. 80s, he said your best salesmen were your gay salesmen. They are, he mm. says, they are the, the best. They know what they're doing. They mm. um, are, 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 are great. And um, I would, that used to get mad at me. I used to say, I would like to have a gay husband, <laughs> a gay friend to help me shop and do hair and, and, and makeup. Um, oh, gay uh, friends is awesome. Yeah, my, uh, I went to a hairstylist and, he told me he was gay, and he gets bull- he got bullied by his neighbors. You're grown men. Why are you bothering somebody? Hmm. Um. You know, to be to a, a grown up adult. Why are you bullying mm-hmm. another adult? You know, it just doesn't make uh, sense <laughs> to me, and it never did. Um. But Danny, I'd like to thank you for coming on today, talking about the LBGTQ plus community, um, bringing awareness, uh, educating me, educating others. This is what this show is about. Um, I talk about the taboo, and it may not be popular, but you know what? I talk about it anyway, because no topic is taboo on Chatting with Betsy. And I want to thank you, Danny, for coming on, and um, I can't thank you enough for your support that you show, Josh. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, um, you're welcome to come back again. Excuse me. <coughs> and I just want to um, thank everyone for listening. I um, want to thank Jeannie White, who's the station manager, produces the show, and writes the blog. Danny would like to remain anonymous. And uh, so there won't be any contact information. But if you do have any comments, please send them to me, and I can send them to Danny. Um, and my, you can reach me at PasuralTalkRadio.com, go on my host page. And I want to thank William Caldwell, the CEO of Passionate Talk Radio, makes this all possible. And I want to thank you, the listeners. If you don't already subscribe to Chatting with Betsy, it is for free. Spotify, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Apple, to name a few. And I just am very grateful that I get to do uh, what I do. And if you want to follow me, I am on Facebook, Betsy E. Wurzel, W-U-R-Z-E-L. And I have a support group if you're a caregiver, uh, or even if you're not, you might be someday, hashtag kick Alzheimer's ass movement on Facebook. And I just want to um, tell the audience, you know, um, this is Mental Health Awareness Month next, well, by the time this gets there, it'll be June, but June is um, 
not just a gay pride month, it's also Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Why can't we be loving? Let's stop the hate people and let's start loving each other. Bring back our humanity and care for each other like we're supposed to. And that's just how I feel. It doesn't matter to me who you are, who you love, your religion, your skin color. Um, We're here to help each other. We're here. We should be here to help each other and love each other and support each other, no matter what, no matter who or what you believe or who you love. And I'm not asking anyone to accept the lifestyle they don't like. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to like it. But don't hate and bully and hurt people. We don't have a right to do that, folks. That's against the law. And that's what I have to say. So if you want to send me hate mail, feel free. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I never had any yet, but you know what? This is the first time. Uh, but I do, I guess. <laughs> I am a... Um, you know, I guess I was on the hippie era. I never was a hippie, but that is just um, how I feel. And, oh, I forgot to say the disclaimer. The views of the guests may not represent those of the host of the station. And that's what I have to say today, folks. And as I always say at the end of my show, in a world where you could be anything, please be kind and shine your light bright because we need it now more than ever. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy. On Passionate World Talk Radio Network, a subsidiary of Global Media Network, LLC. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.